I, you mentioned your stack of beef. So that obviously in my ears, I hear stacking sats. I hear Bitcoin terminology. I see you've got a Bitcoin sure. thing behind you. I know we the crypto industry in general, and some people say Bitcoin is not crypto. I know there's people that are very distinguished about that. Is that something that, yes. are you guys accepting that type of stuff for this or how, do, how does that play into that? Yeah, I think back when, you know, a year ago, we were developing our technology stack. And, you know, and you're right. Crypto is not Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not crypto. You see all the deception that just went on with FTX in the crypto market. That's basically a bunch of manipulation and, and corruption based around digital currencies. And Bitcoin is not that. Bitcoin is decentralized. It's a store of value. It's a peer-to-peer -peer transactional system that we've built in. We have most of our, a lot of our ranchers have onboarded to be able to accept Bitcoin. What that means is that if I have Bitcoin and my rancher accepts Bitcoin, I can trade beef and Bitcoin, Bitcoin and beef. I don't have to ask for permission. We don't have to ask permission from the banks. It's 100% legal. That rancher can actually store some of his value in that Bitcoin, he can transfer it over to the fiat and he can actually go out and build his business. What the ranchers that I see right now that love it, they're not having to pay credit card transaction fees anymore. They don't have to pass that along to the consumer anymore. Consumers are happy. The ranchers are happy. And then whenever the rancher does receive that Bitcoin, if he's got $800 in Bitcoin, he goes, I'm going to put 95% of that transaction into fiat and then i'm going to keep five percent as a store of value into bitcoin and then therefore you know you, you have a savings account and a store of value that rancher didn't have plus he's not spending that three percent on that transaction fee yeah and, and that you know like i said i remember when i was uh buying the the side from this guy locally and i said hey can i just do it on my credit card he was like, man, if, can you give me a check or anything? Because he, they're really, uh -huh. this, it's really the margin is pretty tight on there, so they're doing that. It but really is. Let me ask you because you know this is a this is a you know kind of an over broader topic. You know, we've got this, uh, you know, thought that we're going to have this CBDC centralized bank digital currencies coming in, and that will have complete control. So the banks will have complete control over your money, even what you're allowed to spend it on. Potentially, that's one of the potential concerns there that they could say. Well, you know, you've already exceeded your carbon credit. You're not allowed to buy an extra steak this week or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is some way to maybe get around that. Is that is that part of the calculation? 100%. There? Yeah. I mean, last year when you and I spoke, COP26 was going on, and they did declare the cow a carbon hazard on an inter international front. Some you know nations said no. Some said, okay, let's go get a bit busy. The cow is bad. This is coming. It's not going to happen overnight, but we're at, we are going to have CBDCs. They are going to give you basically carbon scores. You know, it's more of a social credit score system. And, you know, China's already had massive success. And if you're somebody out there and your consumption model, you know, does uh, entail a lot of beef consumption, you're going to have a lower score when it comes to that digital currency. So you bet. I mean, Bitcoin is property. It is legal. There's nothing wrong with using Bitcoin. It is early in the adoption period. So was the internet. We didn't buy shoes on the internet when it first came out. That's how I came up with startup companies was innovation through the internet. We're in that same pain point with Bitcoin. But what people need to understand is they are going full board and they will turn beef into caviar to most of the people in the United States. It doesn't mean that they're going to get rid of beef. It means that beef is going to be shipped overseas and they're going to introduce another fake protein commodity, which you see every day with all of your, you know, your actions and your education. This is coming and Bitcoin is a way around that. It's decentralized. It's peer-to-peer -peer transactions where we don't get a social credit score based on carbon hazards that are nefarious in, in their intent. The cow is not a carbon hazard. The cow ba basically does regrow soil. The, the cow is the best animal protein and the best nutrition in the world. And they're going to put a prohibition against that. And we're not going to have market access if we do follow their rules of centralized digital currencies. Bitcoin is a decentralized currency plus a store of value that's never been seen, you know, in the history of man. And that's what it takes a little bit of education, but we're getting there slowly. They have a 10 year plan. We have a 10 year plan. Yeah. It's so, you know, with some of these CBDs, they could, they could actually change the value of your money based on a social credit score. So if you have a thousand dollars in the bank and they say, well, because you're a, a high consumer of carbon, that thousand dollars is only going to be worth 800 bucks. And if you're a low consumer of carbon, 
we're going to make that worth twelve hundred dollars to incentivize you. And so, th- I mean, th- there's all kinds of ways they can they can manipulate that currency, which is kind of kind of scary. You know, you got to earn your money. Thinking it really about is. It I mean, what it, you know, if you look at it, you know, it's part of the uh, ESG model. You know, they're mm-hmm. they're developing human capital bond markets. You know, hedge funds that are based on consumption models and what you consume. And you look at all the the major food consolidations that have happened 2017 to 2018 on a global front is when they really took a step forward to the one world food group. They admit it. They say, yes, we're going to have a one world food group. We're going to develop food to where they're going to take the the soil and the animal out of our consumption models. They'll introduce more fake commodities, just like they've been doing since the early 70s, ever since you and I've been, you know, been alive, you know, from seed oils to high fructose corn syrup to everything that has gotten us here metabolically bankrupt. They're moving full full speed ahead. And if people are, do not get, like I said before, get more intentional about looking at food as more of a survival mechanism that gives you power instead of a convenience model that is, you know, too easy to get. They've made food so subsidized and commoditized and highly profitable by our consumption, you know, that food has become a drug. It's hard for people to switch off high processed food. You see this all, you know, you're a doctor, you see this, this is your life. In the amount of people that are coming to me that are scared about this, you know, the, what they're trying to do, but the, also the the benefits of going through, you know, maybe not even full carnivore, but carnivore, the, the amount of lives that we're saving and that you're saying that, that I receive emails every day saying, thank you. I had no idea of this from the, the plans on the global front of the One World Food Group all the way to the health benefits of eating pure, you know, animal protein beef. Yeah, there's no doubt that it is, uh, from a health perspective, it's tremendous. So obviously, like you mentioned, you are swimming against the tide with you know so many people trying to condemn animal agriculture in general, particularly cattle. Uh, you know, there's, there's, you know, you know, re- you know, obviously these studies are recently coming out saying, you know, all the research on beef being unhealthy is much garbage. It was a lazy science. That study just came out from the university of Washington the other day, but you know, mm-hmm. largely it's swept under the rug. Nobody, there's this, there's this sort of narrative that's going to go a certain way, regardless of what the actual facts are. The facts don't really matter. It's all about, uh, you know, driving profit a certain way and, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's, I, th- I think there's very few small people that are driving that. So how do we fight against that? I mean, as far as, let me ask you this, you know, the beef initiative and where, where do you, where do you see it growing to? How, how are you going to access more ranchers, more states? What's, what's the strategy? What's the five-year strategy on this? Well, one thing to your comment right there, you know, I tell everybody, I look them in the face and I quit, I, I tell them, I said, quit validating the deceptions out there. That's how we fight this. If we don't participate, they have no power. And so we as individuals and we as the citizens of the United States and of the world, we don't have to play their game. And a lot of people need to understand that and be very clear about that. Acceptance is the key. We can empower ourselves as individuals to go out there and build a new beef industry in the United States. And that is spreading across the world. As far as what the beef initiative and in, in the really the global look at it, uh, I've got some friends in Australia. You know, they have a huge cattle industry in Australia. A lot of it is commoditized. A lot of it is subsidized. A lot of it is on the global front as well. A lot of it we do consume. By the time it gets to us, it's not the best beef that it could be if it stayed in Australia and it was aged correctly in, you know, the whole protocol of quality beef. 